Welcome to Healthy Knees for You, episode number seven, where we are talking about what happens during a total knee replacement surgery. Stay tuned. Well, hey there, my name is Robin Robertson. I am the founder of Healthy Knees Coach, and I'm so happy to be here with you in Healthy Knees For You so that I can bring you the secrets, the steps, and the savvy to help your knees feel better. Today's topic is what happens during a total knee replacement. Now, some of this is what I wish I would have known before heading into my first total knee. I've had both of my knees replaced. They were replaced two years apart. And let's just dive into the three topics we'll cover today. So I want to share with you what types of knee replacement there are, what happens during the knee replacement. This is the non-gory version. I'm not gonna show you pictures of it actually happening, which of course I took during, or had the nurse take during my surgery, because I wanna know all that stuff, but I'm not sharing those today. And then what you can do to prepare for your total knee replacement, or listen in, because if you've had a total knee replacement, the information I share today will help you along the way too. Okay, so some of the mistakes that I see people make when they are considering a total knee replacement is that they haven't taken the time to prepare enough. They also stop exercising after their physical therapy is over and they expect that the knee replacement is going to solve all of their issues. The, the one answer I have to all of those mistakes are exercise is the preparation you need, exercise is the recovery you need, and it should be a part of your life forevermore if you want to maintain the health of your knee and your whole body. I'm sure that might not be the answer that many of you want. We all want that magic pill. We all want that magic knee so that it's replaced. We never have to think about it again. But if you truly want the best health for your body, for your knee, then consistent regular exercise is going to be a part of your life. And it can be a lot of fun. I love when exercise is fun. I help you to make it fun too. Okay, so by being prepared, you are going to start your knee surgery uh, at a higher level. If you're weak and you go into surgery, you're gonna come out weaker. If you are strong going into your surgery, you're going to come out at a higher starting point for recovery. And that makes it easier for you to have good results from your knees. I always looked at any surgery, especially a knee replacement surgery, like it was an athletic event to prepare for. You know the date of your surgery and you want to make the best use of your time beforehand to get ready. Now, because I felt so strongly about helping people with knee issues, I actually wrote a book called Healthy Knees Total Knee Replacement. And in this book, it has all the information you'd ever want to know about preparing for your knee replacement and how to recover from your knee replacement, including a special section written by my friend, Dr. Black, on nutrition. I learned some things from him that I didn't know about how to prepare for surgery through what you eat and what you drink. So let's get on to what types of knee replacement there are. But first I want to clarify that there's actually two joints in your knee. There's the tibiofemoral joint, and that's where the tibia meets the femur. And I'll grab my knee model again to show you. So the tibio from, here's a right knee. We're looking at the front, the kneecap is embedded in this 
uh, quadricep tendon. So your four quadricep muscles come down into this tendon. Your kneecap is embedded. And then the tibiofemoral joint is where your femur, your upper leg bone, is in contact with your tibia or articulates with your tibia. There's actually that nice meniscus in there that keeps the bones from smashing on each other. When the doctor says that you're bone on bone, that means that this or part or all of that meniscus is gone and the articular cartilage that covers the ends of the bones is gone too. Okay, so the tibiofemoral joint encompasses here and then the patellofemoral joint covers where the kneecap rubs against the femur. So your kneecap, as you bend, rubs against your femur and sort of slides up and down a little bit. My model doesn't really show the sliding, but you get the idea. So your knee is bending, that kneecap and the femur, your thigh bone, have its own joint capsule there. Okay. Now, there are four main types of knee replacement surgery. There is kneecap replacement, where just the kneecap is either resurfaced on the underside or a complete replacement is um, installed. And then there is a partial knee replacement. So instead of replacing the entire knee joint, one side or the other, the medial or inside of your knee, is replaced only, or the lateral or outside of your knee joint is replaced. And then there is the total knee replacement, so they are replacing the whole joint. I'll show you what that looks like. And then there is a revision total knee replacement surgery or partial knee replacement surgery. Some people who've had that partial knee ultimately need the other side done too, and sometimes that partial knee replacement implants will be removed and a total knee put in instead. Now you might think, okay, I just had my knee replaced. Is that going to last forever? And the answer is, let's hope so, depending on however um, forever is in your life. So doctors these days are saying a knee will last between 20 and 25 years depending on how good you are to that knee. So staying away from impact sports, staying away from um, gaining a lot of weight, which puts extra stress on your knee joint. But there are conditions that may require a knee, a total knee to be replaced, a revision. And that happens when the implants have loosened and they're kind of knocking around in there. Uh, if there's infection in the replacement parts in and around them uh, that's not cured, sometimes they'll do a washout of the knee and if it's not cured by that and antibiotics, then they might need to do a replacement of the implants. If there is instability in your knee, the soft tissues are not able to support, it can't be uh, corrected through physical therapy if you've broken your leg and it affects the where the implants are in your knee. And then sometimes if you have stiffness after your knee replacement surgery that is not fixed by manual manipulation and physical therapy, then a doctor may suggest having a revision as well. So when I was 56 years old, I had my first knee replaced. And I figured if I got the average years out of it, 22 years, then I would be 78 when it came time to perhaps replace my knee again. And then when I was 78 and I had it replaced, we had 22 years more, I'd be 100. And I figured then I'm dead. So <laughs> I might end up with two replacements in my lifetime because I had my knees both replaced when I was the, on the younger end of the scale. I had them replaced when I was 56 and 58 years old. Okay, so what happens during a knee replacement surgery? I want to walk you through the hospital part of it too so that that doesn't come as a surprise for you and then I'm going to show you on my knee model 
what happens, what the doctors do to the bones inside your knee joint so that you understand that this is a significant surgery that's like a one-way street because once you have a knee replacement, you can't just undo it. You would have to have a revision if something goes wrong. All right, so when you get to the hospital, you'll be asked to uh, change into the hospital gown and your surgery center may ask you to do a scrub down of your body. I know there was a protocol for me the night before my surgery and the morning of my surgery, they asked for a body scrub down because they're trying to reduce any risk of bacteria coming in on your skin. So you'll do another scrub down around your knee and you'll go back to your little waiting room. Your doctor will likely, your surgeon will come in and chat with you, make sure uh, he or she has the correct knee, knee to do the surgery on. Now, I always wrote notes to my doctor on my leg with a Sharpie and things like on my uh, first knee replacement, I said, last time for this knee. So. Uh, we always laughed about that because I want to go in with a good sense of humor. I want to go in with positive thought. We talked about that in our last video, how what you think matters. Uh, okay, and so you'll talk with your surgeon. They'll answer any questions you might have about the surgery process. It is likely that your anesthesiologist will come in for a visit. They want to review your health history, understand if you have any allergies or reactions to any drugs, and if you have any concerns there. And then depending, you may be put in a wheelchair and taken into the surgery room, or you might just walk there yourself. So the surgery room is cool to cold. The temperatures are low because those lights in there heat up the room. Uh, as well, so they want to keep temperatures lower in the room and for body function as well. Uh, you'll be on the surgical table. You'll probably lay out with your arms ex extended so that uh, your anesthesiologist can insert an IV if you haven't had one put in already. And then things will be happening around you. There's more people than you'd imagine in your surgery room, but they'll give you a nice warm blanket or an, a warm air filled blanket. Love those, that's the best part of surgery is the warm blankets. And before you know it, the anesthesiologist will come in with a mask and you'll be out. Thank goodness you're out for a total knee re replacement because it is carpentry. So in my first knee replacement surgery, I had the representative of the company whose implant was being put in my knee. It's called Conformis. It was a custom made knee. And uh, so their rep was there watching what's happening in the room and she took all sorts of pictures for me. So I know probably more than most people want to know about what happens inside of the surgery. So while you are out, a urinary catheter may be inserted and hair at the surgical site may be trimmed or shaved off. The anesthesiologist is going to continue to monitor your body functions, your breathing, your heart rate, your blood pressure, and your surgeon will get to work. An incision will be made from roughly up and down the center of your knee. Now there are different techniques. There are robotic techniques for replacing a knee, but I'm going to just talk about and focus on a surgeon in the room performing a frontal surgery for knee replacement. So the knee will be opened from essentially the top of your tibia, your lower leg bone, to the end of your femur to expose your knee. And then your, so we're talking uh, incision from here to here. They'll move the kneecap out of the way because they don't want to cut through this, right? So they're going to move that out of the way and your knee will likely be bent for the surgery so they can get to the end of the bone and the top of the tibia here. So I'm going to get my 
knee model from the wall here of what the implants will look like once they are in. So this is the femur, this is the tibia, and your knee will work like this. And this is actually the model of my knee. So Conformus gave me this knee so I could use it for demonstrations. And uh, I want to show you what the implants look like before they go into your knee and what actually happens to the end of your bones so that you have an understanding of what that looks like. This is the upper leg bone. This would be the front. This is the back of your knee, back of the bone. And this is the front. So the end of your bone needs to be um, the damaged bone is going to be removed. So you've probably got some arthritis, but they have to cut the bone in order to put the implant onto the bone. Okay, so they're cutting the bone and there's many cuts. So the end of your bone is shaved away and the implant has these two pegs here. So the holes for the pegs will be drilled into the end of your bone. I know it's kind of gross, but that's how it's gonna stay put. And then the implant fitted. Now your surgeon has all the tools needed to make sure it's put on with the right alignment for your leg. The implant most usually is cemented with a surgical cement into place. There are other techniques that don't involve cement. Uh, be sure and ask your doctor about that. Okay, so the femur is done, and then we go to the tibia, your lower leg bone, and essentially the top of the tibia is cut off. Okay, so top of tibia cut off to make the right angle here for your leg and your alignment, and then the implant has this big peg here that will be inserted into the top of your tibia. And on this insert, I just wanted to point out that there is, uh, on this particular type, so this was the custom made, it's cobalt chrome is the metal, and then this is a plastic, essentially, that serves as the meniscus. So that's attached to the implant, okay? So that's going to go on to your knee. And then most likely your knee replacement is also going to include resurfacing of the underside of your kneecap and either an implant will be uh, put on there because there's, there's cartilage that is on the underside of your kneecap. It's actually the thickest articular cartilage in your entire body is under here and that can get rough with age and your doctor is going to want that kneecap to fit in well with the implant. So you'll likely get, uh, have your kneecap resurfaced underneath as well as a part of your knee replacement surgery. All that's happening while you're asleep. So when you come out of the surgery, you will wake up in the recovery room where you are being observed for your body functions and they want to make sure that, um, that you are alert, everything's okay, and then you'll be wheeled off to your hospital room where you'll continue your recovery. You may stay for a day, you may stay for a couple of days, be sure and clarify that with your doctor. Both of my knee replacement surgeries were done in an outpatient basis, so that meant I had to be out of the hospital in 24 hours from when I checked in. Was I rushed? Nah, I didn't feel like I was rushed. Before you leave the hospital, it is likely that you will meet with a physical therapist who's going to get your knee moving and probably get you up and walking. Whether you're using a walker or you're using crutches will be up to you and the, your physical therapist. And then you'll go home and it's time to start that recovery process. The recovery process is no picnic. Having your knee replaced is painful. I've been through it twice now and 
You just have to have patience with the recovery process. As you can see by the cuts to the bone, this is a significant surgery and your body needs time to heal. But you do have to work on range of motion with your knee. That's one of the very most important things that you will need to do. Your doctor, I hope, will share that information with you. And sometimes a physical therapist will start coming to your home or you will go on as a patient to a physical therapy office. Physical therapy can last a range of duration of time depending on your insurance for one thing and how much help you feel like you need. I am a dedicated athlete and so I actually, you would think I'd go less, but I wanted to go longer. I stretched my physical therapy out for as long as I could because my therapist knew that I would do what he told me to do each week and I didn't need to check in with him in order to do it. I had the tools to do that at home. So I went once a week for three months and then some, I think, uh, even after that because I wanted that guidance along the way. You might be in a different situation where you are going twice a week or three times a week because you need their equipment and you need that guidance to understand what to do and how hard to do it. That's always the big challenge after a knee replacement surgery or any surgery is learning where those boundaries are. It is likely that you will find that you overdo it at some point and you set yourself back a few paces. Well, that's a part of learning how much to push and when to hold back. So you can see that a knee replacement surgery is a traumatic event for your body, not to be taken lightly, and to get to the point where you are deciding yes for the surgery, I hope that you've tried everything else first. So what I mean by that, especially, is preparing through exercise. So let's talk about how you can prepare. One of the things that you can do to prepare is to pick up a copy of the Total Knee Replacement book because in this book, it is the complete guide of everything that you can and should do before your knee replacement surgery. Okay, but if you don't have the book, let's talk about what kind of preparation you can do. Just remember that, that a knee replacement surgery is that one-way street, and so you want to tackle this like it is an athletic event. You're going to do everything that you can to prepare for it so that you are putting yourself in the best position to come out of it stronger. You want to train the chain. And by that, I mean getting stronger from your core to your feet. The kinds of activities that you can do will probably be guided by how much pain you're in, but it is surprising how many exercises you can do to strengthen your knees, including some weight lifting and using a bike for that knee mobility. You might actually find by following the Healthy Knees formula program that you reduce your knee pain so much that you don't even want to have the surgery. That's exactly what happened to one of our Healthy Knees students. She had her surgery scheduled. She was in a lot of pain. She was not able to do the activities that she wanted in life and she decided she better come to our program to get ready for her surgery. She did that and felt so good by the end of it, she canceled her surgery. She's back to dancing and enjoying life. All right, so get stronger, move more, buy the book, do the exercises, and you will be in a better place for your knee replacement surgery. I wish you all the best. Of course, if you have any questions I might be able to help with, you can email me at robin at healthyneescoach.com and maybe I'll create an entire video to answer your question because if you have that question, it's likely that others do too. Okay, that's it for this week. To sum it up, we talked about what types of knee replacement there are, 
what happens during the knee replacement surgery and what you can do to prepare for that surgery. Okay, I look forward to our time together again next week. I hope you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm sure that there is a subscribe button right around here somewhere. And if you want more information about the Healthy Knees Formula program, check out the description. There's a link in there. Okay, bye for now.